it's time for real regular season football when it's 2 o'clock on a Friday, and we welcome in senior producer from NFL Films and co-host of ESPN's NFL Matchup Show, Greg Cosell, back for another season of dicing up game tape and drawing up X's and O's for regular season football. And Greg Cosell's weekly segment is presented by Scott Lawnyard, an official commercial site work partner of the Buffalo Bills. Greg, good to have you. How you doing? You like that graphic? We got a graphic for you and everything. How about that? I see, I see. And I'm really glad that you got all dressed up for this segment, Brownie. Oh, yeah. You know, it's uh, have, it's casual Friday for us, but it uh, it's jacket and tie Apparently. for you. We have, we have matching oh, shirts on, too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm freezing. We have the air you conditioner on in here, and I'm like freezing. Shirt on, Brownie. You just got the, the t-shirt working. That's right. You know? Yeah, we're rocking it. Um, I I want to begin here, Greg. Uh, you know, we've got this Titanic matchup here on Monday night, Bills Jets. <laughs> You're gonna have the fanfare of the season opener. Jets fans have been whipped into a frenzy after the Rodgers trade, and then you have the added emotion and pageantry of. You know, the anniversary of 9-11, which is not going to, you know, go unrecognized. It's going to be a a big pregame ceremony to boot. So emotions will be flowing for sure. And you roll all that into this game. And then these guys got to play a division game, no less, in week one. Yeah. My my question to you is, we saw, we've talked, and, you know, we've talked to you a lot about this. The usage of 12 personnel, our suppositions, our prognostications with first-round pick Dalton Kincaid now part of the equation. I know they were running things pretty vanilla in the preseason, but 22% of their snaps in the preseason were out of 12 personnel, which is a sharp increase from what we saw last year, as we know, when the Bills were last in the league at 3%. So is that a, a... a barometer we can use going into week one here against a linebacking core that is okay in coverage, but not great for the Jets. Well, you know, I don't think we're saying anything profound, Brownie, by by saying that they didn't draft Dalton Kincaid to play him eight snaps a game. So, you know, my guess is you're going to see a good amount of 12, and I imagine you'll see some 11 with Kincaid and not Knox because – Kincaid, well, Knox is very good, and I've always liked Knox. You you might see that as well. Um, but both Knox and Kincaid, and certainly Kincaid, can detach from the formation. You know, most coaches start off with the idea, offensive coaches, that let's see how a defense reacts to our personnel. So if you line up with 12, what do the Jets do? Do they stay in in their base defensive personnel, or do they play nickel? That's step one. And then they work off that and they try to figure out what that means as far as what they want to do. Um, But, you know, there's no question to me, and I loved Kincaid coming out, absolutely loved him, um, that, I, you know, he, you know, you get caught up in comparisons. We all do, as you guys know, when you watch college players and everybody says, well, who does he remind you of? And, you know, that's always hard. Sometimes something jumps right into your mind. Other times it doesn't. The only thing I would say is because of his ability to detach and be that single receiver as well to the short side of the field, the way he can be used stylistically is like a Travis Kelsey. Now, obviously, Kelsey's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, and Kincaid hasn't played a snap in a regular season game, but just in the way the player can be deployed within the context of your offense. Yeah, and that's you got to do that, though. I mean, you got to give people some context as to what you're looking at with this guy, and and yeah. as Kincaid takes the field, that's always the hope that you turn him into some guy who's like a first ballot Hall of Famer. You want to get guys right. with similar uses. And, well, you say similar uses, which means hugely diverse as a tight end. I mean, that's the real question, right? The question is, whether you go 12 or 11 personnel, can you make the defense pay for their personnel choice to match you? And the other factor is, by the use of your formations, can you give Josh Allen more pre-snap information so that he essentially can win the down, which doesn't mean the play is always going to be successful, but at least know what he's getting before the snap of the ball. Now, every once in a while, you know, that doesn't work. Of course, defensive coaches, they're pretty good in this league. Um, And sometimes guys just 
you know, make a better play on defense, but you're trying to give your quarterback as much information as possible before the snap of the ball. Because as, as we all know, and Steve, you know better than Brownie and I, since we did not line up and play, you know that, you know, once the ball snapped, things happen pretty fast. Yeah. I want to ask you, Greg, a second question about this second line of the Jets defense with the linebackers. Last night we saw play action work very well for the Lions against the Chiefs in getting those linebackers to bite. The Bills were middle of the pack in play action usage last year. I think they ranked 17th in the league, right. used it a little less than a quarter of the time. How effective could that tactic be against these Jets linebackers based on the history in which you've seen them react to play action pass? Well, Brownie, there's two real, there's two parts to play action. Uh, there's play action with your quarterback under center, and there's play action with your quarterback in the gun. The Bills run play action predominantly with the quarterback in the gun, except for those plays which we see often where it's that quick bang play action, you know, and they'll hit digs on on the quick slant, you know, and, and oftentimes uh, Josh is under center there. But play action under center is not foundational to the Bills offense. Now, again, it, that doesn't mean it won't be now. We don't know. They haven't played a regular season game. The Lions, on the other hand, that is absolutely foundational to what the Lions do. If memory serves me correctly, Jared Goff had the most play action snaps from under center a year ago. So that's foundational to what they do. It was not foundational to the Bills. And, and keep in mind, when you go play action with your quarterback under center, it takes longer to get to the mesh point. So that means that linebackers, second level defenders, they have to wait a beat longer to see what the play is. When it's shotgun play action, it happens right away. So very often that doesn't necessarily have the same impact on second level defenders as play action with your quarterback under center. So when the Bills head to New Jersey, they're going to face a defense that, that gave them problems last year Twice. and also one that can really come at them in waves up front. So if you're, if you're just a fan watching at home, what is going to tell you what tactics are the Bills going to employ to combat a defensive line that may overmatch them up front. And it's interesting you say that, Steve, because last year in each game, the Jets' defensive approach was much the same, week nine and week 14. The emphasis was on coverage more than pressure. In the second game, they did rush five a little higher percentage, but not a high percentage at all. They relied on that front four, and they relied on coverage. Um, and, and again, you would assume they'll play in a similar way. So now, you know, it comes down to your ability to execute against seven in coverage. So now it comes down to two things, protection and your route concepts. And, you know, clearly you have to be able to, to do that against uh, this defense. Now, the other factor is the run game. We don't know what that's going to look like. Obviously, they signed Damian Harris and Latavius Murray. They expect James Cook to be a year better. Um, they drafted uh, Torrance, uh, the right guard who is – a powerful mauling type player. So the assumption is that the run game will be a little bit more foundational to what they do. But I think we all know that it's not going to, they're not going to take Josh Allen out of the equation in any meaningful way, but I think they need to try to create some kind of physical presence. So it's not just that jet front teeing off against an O line that is a little bit new and probably is a little bit of a work in progress. Greg, I know you'll look at everything when you're back in your office watching film of this on Tuesday morning, but on Monday night when you're watching it on television, what matchup will be drawing your eye right out of the gate? Hmm. That's a great question. Um, well, first of all, I'm very curious to see if the Jets do exactly what they did a year ago in the secondary. You know, everybody is under the assumption, unless you watch tape, that Sauce Gardner matches up to people. He did not a year ago. He was the left corner, and D.J. Reed was the right corner. And D.J. Reed actually had a very, very good season as well. So my assumption would be, because their defense is very good, um, that they would continue to keep Sauce Gardner at left corner and Reed at right corner. So he's not necessarily going to match up to Diggs. Although I can't remember which game it was. Was it the first game? It might have been the first game where he hit um, uh, Diggs for 42 yards. It might have been the first play of the game. It was the first yeah, play of the game in the first, first game, matchup. Week nine. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was the first yeah, I think play. that was the first game of the season, the, the the first matchup of the season, week nine, where um, he hit him for 42 yards. But, um, you know, I, I'm curious to see how the Jets play in the secondary. And the other the thing that relates to that, because now with Kincaid, I'm curious to see how the, the Bills line up their receivers, because I think you'll see more diversity, more variation in their receiver uh, locations, where guys line up, because Diggs can line up anywhere. Kincaid can line up anywhere. I think Davis can as well. Um, you know, who's the number three receiver right now? Right. Wide out. Uh, well, probably it's, sure it's probably sure field, but it, for all intents and purposes, it could be Kincaid. Yeah. Yeah, and if Sherfield's in there, he can line up anywhere as well, inside or outside. So, you know, I, I, I'm curious to see how the, the Bills do that. Uh, because as I said, but personnel and formation are really the two things right away that you want to do offensively to see how the defense reacts. Right, and so when you get into the, uh, this game like this, what about Aaron Rodgers and hmm. this offense? I mean, everything's a question mark right now, although, yep. you know, Nate Hackett, Back in the picture, they're going to run the probably the system that put the guy in the back to back, you know, MVP race. Um, you got to think that the offense at least would resemble what they were doing in Green Bay when when Rodgers was so successful up there. It was only two years ago. Uh, what are your thoughts about how this Jet offense will look with the specific weapons they've got rather than the Green Bay guys? Yeah, I mean, they've got good weapons. I, you know, I love Garrett Wilson. I think he's a really, really good receiver. I actually like their tight end a lot, too, Conklin. I think he's, I think he's really good. Um, you, know, you, you know, the run, the thing that I think the run game element, because in Green Bay, that was something that was always kind of overlooked a little bit. So the run game element, I think, is something that um, I think we're all waiting to see what that means. Because, you know, they, they'll have Brees Hall. They'll have Dalvin Cook. How is that going to play out? Their offensive line would probably be the question mark as we start the season. Um, but, you know, when you're dealing with with Wilson and Lazard, who's a really solid player and is obviously comfortable with with Aaron Rodgers, um, it'll probably look very similar to the Green Bay, Green Bay offense. Um, you know, it's hard to know exactly, you know, what Rodgers is right now. And when I say that, I don't mean he's no good. But the tape last year, I thought, showed a couple of things. Uh, the main thing to me were his legs. You know, I don't think he moved quite as well. Um, we'll see if that's, you know, an issue at all. Um, I guess he had an injury last year that a lot of people talked about to his hand, his throwing hand, because he did miss some throws last year that, you know, you normally expect him to make routinely. Greg, what was the Jets? And I realize it was with a host of different quarterbacks last year for the Jets. What was the general approach by opposing defenses in covering Garrett Wilson? Because I'm anticipating a lot of one-step now routes for him to get the ball yeah. in his hands as quickly as possible. And you can come up and press and get in his face, but that comes with risk, and you probably have to roll safety help over the top to protect your corner a little bit, knowing how dangerous Wilson is with the ball in his hands and just a couple of inches of space. What was the general approach in trying to neutralize Wilson by opposing defenses last year once he got up and running? Yeah, I can't remember every game, Brownie, but, you know, he was a rookie. And, you know, I don't recall, so I, I could be wrong. I don't think that defenses built their, their entire approach to take away Wilson the way you see with someone like Justin Jefferson where, or Devontae Adams where it's really clear that defenses are doing that. Now, to my way, to my way of thinking, based on watching the Bills defense, you know, and obviously Sean is going to to be the coordinator this year, but I don't think that that's the way he normally plays. Wouldn't you guys agree? I, I don't yeah. think he's necessarily right. going to think in terms of doubling or bracketing him. I mean, if you see it, you, you'd see it rarely. I don't think that would be a foundational approach to how they go about it. Um, so, you know, I think that they'll play their defense. Uh, hopefully play it correctly in terms of assignments. Um, they'll mix man and zone. Um, maybe you'll see a little more pressure depending on how they feel about that in, 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 in given situations. Um, but I don't think they're going to build a plan around Garrett Wilson. Now, maybe I'll be wrong, but I don't, I don't see that. Have, is there uh, been a, a generalized 
way that you've seen over the course of Aaron's career that teams see him defensively? Like, do you see every team or a lot of teams characteristically doing certain things against Aaron that they may not do, or just because it's Aaron, um, what he brings to the table, what the Green Bay offense brought to the table? Are there, well, you know what I mean? Because the guy's yeah, the guy's he, a Hall of Famer and he played forever. Yeah, the guy's, I mean, yeah. look. Look, last year was it was you know his toughest year in a number of years, but the guy's really good, Steve. You know that. Yeah. I mean, you're dealing with a guy whose delivery is incredibly compact. You know, it's the ball gets out. Uh, he's been throughout his career so precisely accurate with his ball location. Um, can throw the deep ball. You know, he can make every throw. Can throw on the run. That's the one thing that I think that I'm curious to see if he can still do well because I thought. As I said last year, I didn't think his legs were there the same way, which could be a function of age, and we'll have to see. If it's a function of age, it's not going to get necessarily better. Although, could it be better week one or week two or week three? It could, just because you haven't played you know, a lot of season yet, and he didn't play much in the preseason. Um, but, you know, I don't think there's one way to play against him. You know, someone said to me the other day, well, you know, early in the season last year, you know, Patrick Mahomes struggled a little bit with his own coverage. Well, you know... Am I supposed to then say, well, just play zone and you shut down Patrick Mahomes? I mean, you know, that, that <laughs> stuff gets a little crazy. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't think there's one way, Steve, that you, you know, you say, well, if we do this, we're going to stop Aaron Rodgers. All right. So, Greg, you mentioned Sean McDermott already and the fact that he is calling this defense now. If you had to hypothesize on how the Bills defense might look different with Coach McDermott calling it, as opposed to Leslie Frazier, what would be your hypothesis on that? Uh, two things I, I would think I would say. Number one, I think the pressure percentage would be a little higher. And two, I think the, the variation in pressure concepts would increase. That would be my guess. Because, you know, Sean came from the Jim Johnson School here in Philadelphia, and Jim Johnson was very well known to be one of the best pressure defensive coordinators in the league. And I guarantee that that Sean knows all that stuff really, really well. And my guess would be that that's what you would see. Now, when I say pressure, everybody might immediately assume, oh, well, that's man coverage. And how do you feel about your corners? You don't have to play man coverage behind pressure. In fact, a lot of teams don't. Now, there's a there's matchup elements. Obviously, at some point, you have to match routes, but it's not doesn't have to be pure man coverage. So those were two things, Brownie, I think you could see. Will you see them against Aaron Rodgers? Maybe, but I think you will see that with Sean. What do you think the Bills are risking on on the defensive side of the ball by playing two linebackers that are you know, light in the pants? Milano, who's a 238, right. and maybe Terrell, Ber Terrell Bernard, who's even lighter than that, maybe less than 230. 225. So yeah. is that – Dangerous in this day and age in the foot in the NFL, or is it more normal than than we might think? Um, dangerous, probably not dangerous. The question is, what does the opponent, the opposing offense, do? I mean, the Jets they do have a big O line. You know, it's 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 a work in progress. Um, you know, will Hackett believe that? Hey, we want to really come out and be physical and really try to establish some kind of power football. I mean, we saw last night with uh, Chris Jones out that the Lions clearly felt that they wanted to establish some physicality and run the ball between the tackles. And it's not a matter of gaining 150 yards because Montgomery, I think, gained 70, 75 yards, but he did carry 20 times and it allowed them to have some lengthy drives because it seemed like he was getting, you know, three, four, five yards all the time. Do the Jets want to take that approach and make Milano? who's a great player, but obviously he's not a big physical guy in a strict sense. And whether it's Bernard, whoever it may be, um, do they want to see how they handle that? I think there'll be an element of that for sure. And I, then I think how the Bills play that will dictate how the game continues from a Jets offensive standpoint. Last one I've got for you, Greg, concerns the increase in three safety looks um, around the league. We yeah. hear... We hear that the Jets may be doing some of that with Adrian Amos as the third safety on the field. Obviously, Taylor Rapp could be a factor in that equation for the Bills if they choose to go that route. Where Maybe just explain 
some of the advantages that can provide to a defense as a countermeasure? Well, normally teams do that. I shouldn't say normally because I'm sure they do it for many reasons. But a lot of teams do that. Essentially, Brownie is their base defense now. The Cowboys do that as their base defense. They play three safeties. They hardly ever play with three linebackers. And very often you do that because you get better matchups on tight ends. Because if you want to play some man coverage, you'd much rather have a safety matchup to a tight end than a linebacker. Um, so a lot of teams do that. Uh, could the Jets do that? They absolutely could. Um, because obviously, if you know, could they go big nickel, as I like to call it, big nickel meaning three safeties? Um, could they do that versus 12 personnel? They absolutely could because you still have a bigger body in position you know, to play the run game if need be. But you also can then play the pass game ideally better because you're dealing with a you know a player who's used to playing in pass coverage. So it's definitely that's become much bigger around the league. Not every team does it, but more and more teams do for sure. Greg, as always, it's great talking to you. Really appreciate it. We'll look for the NFL matchup on TV this weekend. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much.